the most likely bug here. All right, so here's our next um, HNE slide. I, I love this entity because this is another thing that's absolutely pathognomonic on just an HNE slide. And I really don't need a history or radiology or anything. And yes, absolutely right. Who was that? Uh, is that Rifat that said that? Let me try and see your name. I think it was Rifat, but um, if it's Kalyani, my apologies. So this is absolutely right. This is alveolar proteinosis. The other name for this is pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. Why, why is this not edema? The person who gave me the right answer, can you tell me? Why did you say alveolar proteinosis and why not edema? Edema also fills the, um, the alveolar spaces or air spaces or alveoli in exactly the same way. Why is this not edema? It's pink, but edema is pink too. You're right that it's pink, but edema is pink. Homogenous, and that, that's actually a, a good answer, but it's actually edema that looks more homogenous than this. Um, why is this not pneumocystis? Dense is actually the right answer. Why is it not pneumocystis pneumonia? That also fills the alveoli like this and has, um, you know, an alveolar filling sort of pattern. Why is this not pneumocystis pneumonia, PCP? Well, there's a couple of clues here. So one thing uh, that is characteristic about this is in these pink areas, you have these little, even denser pink blobs. You're right, absolutely right. So pneumocystis, uh, they, um, uh, you said that will be bubbly and that's exactly right. Pneumocystis pneumonia has a bubbly or frothy appearance that's, uh, that's really characteristic even on h &E. But the, the distinctive feature about pulmonary alveolar proteinosis or PAP is these little dense pink globules in a background of a, of a dense pink uh, uh, material. So see these little pink globules, I'll point at a few of them. Here's another one. Here's one, here's a gigantic one. I'm not sure why it's so big here. Usually they're of about this size. So what is this material made of? Blobs, exactly. What are these blobs made of? Does, uh, do either one of you know? Is this just, um, is this some kind of um, abnormal substance? Surfactant, that's absolutely right. And your answer is correct. So wh why does this surfactant accumulate in the lung like this? Wh is it normal for surfactant to just fill up the alveoli like this? Is this a normal phenomenon? Do you expect your lungs or my lungs to be filled with surfactant in this manner? Well, this is obviously abnormal. Absolutely, you're right. Somebody said, guess not. Well, it's you're absolutely right. It's not normal for surfactant to fill the lungs like this. In normal lungs, surfactant actually gets cleared out. And the hypothesis is that surfactant is cleared by macrophages. Now, the interesting thing is that macrophages require to clear surfactant a molecule called GMCSF. Everybody knows what GMCSF is, but not in in this role. You know, we know that GMCSF is a colony stimulating factor in the bone marrow, and it makes things grow, cells grow in the bone marrow. But what's not well known about GMCSF, at least to people who are not very into lung, is that GMCSF actually helps macrophages clear surfactant from the lung in a normal way. So for some reason, if your GMCSF is damaged or attacked, then the macrophages won't be able to clear surfactant and surfactant will build up and cause pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. So do you guys know what causes this GMCSF to, to malfunction in this disease? What actually happens to the, to the macrophages and the, and the GMCSF pathway? There are actually antibodies against that in this disease. So this is an autoimmune disease in the vast majority of adult patients who have PAP. This is an autoimmune disease um, these patients make antibodies to GMCSF and because you have antibodies to a thing that's normally required for clearance, it doesn't clear and it fills up the alveoli. So the diff this is really a beautiful example of a, of, a, of a disease where the mechanism is really well figured out um, and the, um, uh, the pathology is, is so characteristic that you can make a diagnosis here just from the H&E. Um, as mentioned before, pneumocystis has a frothy appearance, that doesn't look like this. But if you have any doubts, you can always do a GMS stain. A PAP is negative and of course, um, uh, PCP or pneumocystis pneumonia will stain positive. Uh, there's a, 
important trivia question that might be important for the boards is they like to know patients with PAP get what kind of infection characteristically. So on top of the PAP, they get another infection. Does, do you guys know? Uh, this infection also can spread to the brain and cause brain abscesses. So PAP patients are predisposed to a bunch of infections, but especially this one. It starts with an N. So it's actually nocardia. Nocardia is something that PAP patients have a predisposition to for some reason. So that that might be a um, board question or, or a trivia question that people would like to ask you. Another thing I'll point out about PAP, you see these little cholesterol clefts, very mini cholesterol clefts that are in the fluid. That is also a characteristic finding and is a clue to the diagnosis of PAP like this one and that one. And guess what the uh, treatment is, the standard treatment for PAP, does anyone know? If your alveoli are filled with surfactant and uh, that's causing problems, how would you treat it? You actually wash out the fluid manually by flooding the alveoli with, with saline and then, then aspirating it out during bronchoalveolar lavage. So, so this is actually um, a kind of washing out of the alveoli, so to speak, um, that's done to, uh, to treat these patients. And that um, often results in symptomatic relief as well as radiologic clearing of the abnormalities. The classic radiology is a thing called crazy paving. It's a crazy paving appearance. Uh, but anyway, we are focusing on the pathology here today. So I wanted to show you an example of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. This is a, just a classic example. One last point before we move to the next slide is that in pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, the interstitium of the lung is absolutely normal. The alveolar septa are completely normal. Yet, from a radiologic perspective, they call this interstitial lung disease, which is a uh, quite an ironic thing. It looks like interstitial lung disease to them, but in reality, this is airspace lung disease.